civilians in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. The Great Euphrates River is drying up and the scientists are frightened. The river's rapid drop in water level is not the only thing disturbing locals. As the water dries, it keeps revealing shocking things underneath. The mystery behind the river cannot be explained logically. The terrifying things discovered under it are lacking explanation. Ancient cities, caves, and mysterious creatures are emerging. Could this be the fulfillment of an end-time prophecy? Join us as we uncover the cave under the Euphrates River that was sealed off after they found something terrifying. The Great Euphrates River is gradually drying up, and it shows no sign of stopping. However, as it slowly but surely dries up, it reveals so many secrets and seems to be on the path of fulfilling certain prophecies in both Islam and Christianity. In their usual search, archaeologists discovered a rather mysterious cave beneath the Euphrates River in the Kurdistan region of Iraq with tunnels linked to it. So obviously the drying up phenomenon of the Euphrates River has not only raised questions about its nature or the reason for its drying up, but also led to the discovery of a series of mysterious caves within its depths. As expected, when strange things are unearthed, this intriguing find has generated considerable discussion and long-lasting debate among Bible scholars, Islamic leaders, scientists, and religious communities, all trying to understand the origin and purpose of these caves. Archaeologists have been studying the Euphrates River caves to determine their historical significance and to understand how they might have been used by the ancient civilizations that once thrived along the riverbanks. Suggestions and speculations have long started flying about as everyone remains curious about the nature and purpose of the caves. While some researchers suggest that ancient dwellers could have used the caves as living quarters, storage spaces, or even spiritual sites, others think that they might have served as jails or prisons. Many people lean towards Towards this second theory because it would make absolutely no sense for people to live underwater. Hence, using it as a jail or prison would make more sense. But it doesn't undermine that the caves may have served a more practical purpose, such as storage for food and supplies, or as workshops for artisans and craftspeople. The peculiar microclimate within caves can sometimes offer ideal conditions for preserving perishable goods or carrying out specialized tasks requiring controlled environments. However, it is important to point out that these theories remain speculative with no definitive evidence to support them. The caves under the Euphrates River represent a fascinating and thought-provoking enigma, and their discovery has inspired various interpretations, deductions, and conjectures. As investigations continue in the area, archaeologists and the public hope that more light will be shed on these mysterious caves' true nature and purpose, enriching our understanding of the Euphrates River's rich history and cultural heritage. The hidden city is believed to have been established between 1475 and 1275 BC. The first question was if it was the much talked about Zakiku. It used to be a bubbling place that thrived during the Mitanni Empire's reign. The city's existence dates back over 3,400 years, going way back to several eras, such as the Sumerian, Assyrian, Greek, Byzantine, and Islamic eras. When this city stood out significantly in its glory days, it covered a large area, making it a force to be reckoned with at that time. However, the peace and glory may have lasted briefly because conflict started arising. Most notable were the clash with the Egyptian Empire and the rise of the Assyrian Empire, which brought about its downfall. In no time at all, this bubbling city was abandoned, and after that, swallowed by the sea's embrace, never to be seen again. Or so we thought, until in 2018, the city reappeared during a drought that rocked Iraq. The drought caused much damage, and it prompted the partial drainage of a dam to salvage crops. And that was when something unbelievable was found. There it was, the first glimpse of the underwater city, sitting lonely in the place which was just a moment ago, filled with water. This underwater city is as fascinating as it is intriguing, and it has archaeologists and history enthusiasts all over it, waiting to unveil all its secrets. By nature, humans are as curious as they are, so naturally, people did not believe it was a city. This was until writings, religious things, and special objects were found, giving insight into those who had lived there, their beliefs and rituals. Since its discovery, experts and archaeologists have carefully observed every artifact, structure, and geological feature in the Zakiku. And with each discovery, more light is shed on the already vanished civilization, revealing what used to be their daily lives, social order, and economic practices. The discoveries also show how the people lived, their jobs, 
and how their society worked. Religious writings and songs teach us what the Zakiku people believed and how they worshiped their gods. In the cave, archeologists also found pictures and sculptures detailing everyday life, stories, and important events. The art is proof of Zakiku's culture and artistic ways. Studying them has helped researchers understand how the people of the ancient city express themselves and connect them to other cultures. The finds in Zakiku's old walls aren't just old things. They're like windows to a lively, interesting world that existed before, giving us a deep look into our shared human history. Findings like pottery shards, tools, and personal belongings have offered insights into what used to be their crafts, technology, and way of life. The fact that the city is near the Euphrates River gives it more significance and paints a clearer picture of its history. The river served as a lifeline for them, as it did for other riverbank cities, supplying water for irrigation and fertile lands that sustained plentiful crops. Their thriving agricultural community supported the city's economy, fostering a diverse cultural and social fabric. Some other interesting finds were clay pots holding cuneiform tablets that detail their daily lives. Some of these tablets had seal impressions, one linked to an important person from the nearby town of Turka. Looking closely into this find, his life in the society of that time, around the 18th century, they discovered a rather interesting history of how rich people lived and the problems faced by regular people. However, note that all these theories are based on conjectures and have yet to be substantiated by concrete evidence. Whether they are mere speculations or not, people will continue until they find an answer. And so some others have suggested that the caves could have been utilized for religious or ceremonial purposes, serving as secluded spaces for rituals or meditation. Another possible theory suggests that the caves might have been used as shelters or hiding places during conflict or unrest, providing protection and refuge for the region's inhabitants. We mentioned the clash with the Egyptian and Assyrian empires, so it makes sense that this suggestion came up. Despite the numerous theories surrounding the nature and purpose of the caves, a definitive answer has yet to be found. However, as research progresses and more discoveries are made, archaeologists and historians may be able to piece together the puzzle and paint a clearer picture of how these enigmatic caves were utilized by the people who once lived along the Euphrates River. By understanding their purpose, we can gain valuable insights into these ancient civilizations' cultural practices and daily lives. But what exactly is the Euphrates River? Unless you live in the desert or any other place devoid of water, chances are that the rivers, lakes, streams, and other water bodies in your area are the lifeblood of your community, even if you don't realize it. The Euphrates River is by far the largest waterway in Southwest Asia. Like many other rivers, it holds great importance to the civilizations and development of the area. Religious-wise, the Euphrates has been in existence since the world began and has been used since around 4000 BC to support the growth and development of settlements in the Middle East. The earliest of these settlements being the civilizations of Sumer and Mesopotamia, later joined by Babylon, as well as Assyria. The Euphrates is one of two major waterways in the region. The other one is the River Tigris, which contributed to the rise of the Mesopotamian Empire. In ancient times, rivers were a crucial source of survival and growth, and for this reason, it can often be seen in history that settlements sprung up along rivers. At first, the use of rivers was very limited, as they only existed to provide food and water for new settlers. However, their uses began to increase when they were used for farming, trade, and transportation. Both the Euphrates and Tigris rivers continue to be a source of water for major cities in the Middle East, even to this day. The Euphrates River has its headwaters in Turkey and then flows down through the modern countries of Syria and Iraq. The river does not provide a border for any modern nation, nor did it ever serve as one for a past civilization. However, it is mentioned in the Christian Bible as one of the borders to Canaan, the Promised Land. The river's extensive course through the Middle East has allowed for the region's strong growth. The river joins with the Tigris about 100 miles from the Gulf of Persia. Undoubtedly, rivers are still very important to modern-day communities. However, they were absolutely integral and completely necessary to humankind's first agricultural societies. It would not be an overstatement to say that they couldn't have lived without rivers. As such, it comes as little surprise that the first great civilizations of mankind often rose alongside the banks of great rivers. In the region known today as the Middle East, the mighty Euphrates River, along with its sister channel, the Tigris, is the main river valley that fostered the development of the ancient civilizations of Sumer and Mesopotamia. Now that we've known what the Euphrates is and how it came to be, let's check out the terrifying things that happened in it. 
As the Euphrates River gets even smaller, it turns out that caves and works of art are not the only things being uncovered. More interesting things have been brought to light, like the hidden tunnels under the water. One amazing thing about them is that the tunnels are made with very good stairs, posing the question, who made them? These tunnels' walls are surprisingly and awesomely well done, and they still hold strong. Some old stories have these tunnels in them, in some of these stories that match up with old written records, the mysterious tunnels are connected to a person. They are linked with a famous queen named Semiramis, who brings together stories and reality. Based on Christian beliefs, there are speculations that the tunnels are used to imprison angels. They would eventually be released at an appointed time to wipe out one-third of the world population. Still, all these claims were soon refuted by many with the discovery of the old texts that linked the tunnels as a means through which Babylon was connected to Mesopotamia. The tunnels raise many questions about the past, but these questions have yet to be answered. But just when humanity was trying to figure out the purpose of the tunnels, another bizarre thing began to happen. Strange sounds started coming from one of the tunnels in the cave. Something like this would make one's skin crawl. Just imagine being in a place that has been abandoned for thousands of years, only to start hearing strange sounds nearby. The people were already there, so they decided to investigate it. But what they found was completely unexpected, simply out of expectations, leading to the cave ceiling. Upon investigation, the archaeologists found a strange-looking creature underground with a rather big mouth and a snake-like tongue. No one could explain what it was, despite the speculations that were brought up, resulting in the cave being immediately closed off. People have been trying to guess the creature's nature, and there are so many speculations about what the creature truly is. While some believe it is simply a fish, others believe it to be a reptile. It is assumed that the strange creature is responsible for the strange sounds, or maybe there just might be dangerous things hidden within that tunnel that have not been revealed. The Euphrates River has not stopped revealing things underwater, even as it continues to experience its ongoing dry periods. Can you imagine a factory at the bottom of the sea? History enthusiasts have found more amazing things within the ancient city, and one such find includes a well-kept factory surrounded by big walls and towers. Surprisingly, despite being so old and submerged underwater for a long time, the factory has remained in good shape, as though it's been standing untouched on solid ground. The factory is a tall building used for storing important things, which was a big deal for the people of that time. The building, made with dried mud walls and having been around for over 3,000 years, is still strong, even though it was damaged during an earthquake around 1350 BC. The top parts of the walls are falling apart, and it is believed that that might have saved the lower parts from getting damaged by water. Digging even deeper revealed even more amazing things. Bow, amazing? We're talking about pots underwater. Five clay pots holding more than 100 cuneiform tablets were found. Some of the tablets were still in their clay covers, giving us a perfectly safe look into the history and daily lives of the city's people. These old clay tablets are like time machines, showing us secrets we wouldn't know otherwise. Another significant discovery made in the city is an ancient fortress, which most likely played a crucial role in the defense and control of the region during times of conflict. The strategic location of the fortress, as well as its construction, can provide valuable insights into the military tactics and technologies used by the civilizations that once inhabited the area. The Euphrates River played a big role in sustaining civilizations, but it played an even bigger role at the start of civilization, especially in the Fertile Crescent. This crescent-shaped nursery was for early farming communities, setting the scene for modern farming civilizations. The Fertile Crescent lies between the two great rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. This fertile crescent, from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea, introduced the idea of farming, which plays a major role in the survival of mankind today. The ancient Mesopotamians loved this land because the river floods annually, bringing rich soil called silt, which is perfect for crop growth. But these floods also cause problems, wiping out whole villages and leaving the land beyond the rivers dry. However, the clever Sumerians, who lived in Mesopotamia then, didn't let these challenges stop them. They used smart farming techniques like irrigation and making canals to bring water from the rivers to faraway fields during dry times. They also invented the plow, making planting seeds easier. With these improvements, they had more food, leading to more people. 
About 3000 BC, the first cities like Uruk with around 40,000 people started to appear. These cities became busy trading centers, exchanging extra grain and wool for wood, stone, and metal. As the Euphrates River dries up, it shows the remains of old civilizations like Babylon. These archaeological remains, like houses, give us a peek into how the Babylonians lived alongside the river. The story of Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent shows how humans can handle challenges and develop smart ideas. The rivers that once shaped these civilizations are now telling us more about our ancient past, connecting the dots, and finishing the story of this birthplace of human civilization. The river will completely dry up soon. The Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources reported in 2021 that by 2040, the Euphrates River might experience a complete dry up. This is due to climate change and prolonged periods of drought, just like the one that rocked the country in 2918. The Euphrates River, which used to be very critical for human civilizations, is gradually getting smaller, proving how important water is to the people in that area. A long time ago, the Babylonian Empire understood how important water was. They controlled it from the Euphrates for their success. They used the river as a water highway, and everything seemed to be progressing in their favor. But of course, that was just for a while because things began to roughen up. It got complicated when different countries had to share the river's water. Having realized the importance of the river, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq each built dams for themselves, causing some serious downstream problems. The once big river, which seemed endless if viewed from the bank, is now just a small part of what it used to be. With the building of the dams, places like Iraq, which is downstream, suffered, while upstream kept getting richer and fatter because of their dams. It got so bad, and the discontent escalated to the point of fights. Iraq even threatened that they might break the dams to get more water. Other big countries had to step in to meditate and stop a big problem from happening. But did the problem end there? No, it didn't. Nobody wants less. Everyone wants more water without thinking about how little there was or brooding about what to do if there was none. The river is getting smaller, the land is drying up, and communities need help to get even a little water. Drought is imminent in Iraq and other places. Millions of Syrians near the Euphrates are in danger because their only hope of water is the river. They don't have other options. The sad story behind the drying up of the Euphrates is that the giant river that used to give life and aid the development of human civilizations now brings trouble and suffering. There's hardly a major thing in the world right now that cannot be linked to religion. Most historical structures have at least one link to one prophecy, and the Euphrates is no different. The prophecies behind the river are some of the most significant in both Christianity and Islam. There is speculation among a lot of people that the Euphrates River drying up is proof of predictions in Islamic teachings. According to these teachings, it is said that the Euphrates will dry up one day, and when that happens, what will be revealed will be a mountain of gold hidden under its water. This prediction comes from stories passed down to recent generations by Prophet Muhammad in Hadiths. The idea of a mountain of gold means a lot of wealth and abundance. As such, it would be no surprise if many believers in the Quran are actually looking forward to it. This may be very good, but while it holds great promises, it could also cause serious problems if it is true and happens. We have learned from past experiences that big discoveries of valuable things led to fights and issues over who got what and who owns what. It could mess up how things work economically and cause conflicts between countries. Who knows? It might even trigger a major war. From a Christian perspective, Scholars believe that the mysterious caves discovered within the Euphrates River have been the home of demons for many centuries. This belief is based on a prophecy found in the pages of the Bible, which discusses the release of four angels bound in the river Euphrates. In the Bible, there's a part about the Euphrates River that concerns when the world is ending. According to the Bible, it is said that an angel will pour something out of a vial on a river, making it dry, and this river is none other than the great Euphrates. And it looks as if that prophecy is kind of happening now. With the Euphrates River drying up quickly, it seems like the angel may have already poured out the substance onto the river. The book of Revelation is easily the scariest book of the Bible. While you can find some scary things in prophetic books like Daniel and Ezekiel, the book of Revelation talks about even more terrifying things. It doesn't just say that the river would dry up. It mentions four angels that would be let loose from the dried up river. And these angels are coming to cause much trouble and chaos, taking out a large group of people and destroying part of the earth during the end times. Some people do not believe in the Christian faith. For those that don't follow, this account from the Bible is pretty intense and might sound like a wild story, but strange things have been noticed near the Euphrates River, making people wonder if these old writings might have some element of truth. 
Whether or not you believe in these predictions by Christians and Muslims, it doesn't undermine the fact that the Euphrates River and the things found underneath it are mysteriously connected to the beliefs and faiths of millions of people worldwide. The world will end soon. This has been ringing for a while, so it is not a new thing that the end is near. Religious leaders have cited passages from the Book of Revelation to support this claim. The drying up of the Euphrates River and the discovery of the mysterious caves have added fuel to the fire burning around these beliefs. However, these interpretations remain speculative for most people and are open to debate. The Bible predicts that the Euphrates River will dry up in the last days to prepare the way for the kings of the east to pass through. The river is a massive land barrier that would hinder any army from advancing east to west. At more than 1 the 800 miles long and an average of 300 yards wide, the Euphrates River has been a substantial source of life in the region. According to Revelations 16, 12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. The Bible doesn't say exactly who these kings of the east are, but biblical scholars and theologians have different ideas about who they are. One popular interpretation is that the kings of the east refer to the rise of China and other Asian nations as powerful political and economic entities. The reason for this seemingly wild guess is not far-fetched. In Revelation 9, 16-18, John predicts that these kings of the east will have a standing army of two devoured million. This is a rather bold prophecy because when you consider it, at the time he was writing, there weren't 200 million people on the planet. However, today China has more than 2,100 million soldiers, just as the Bible predicted. It's also worth noting that whatever the kings of the east are, they are seen as a formidable force in the end times and will be part of the final battles that will take place before the return of Jesus. Either way, this massive army must cross the Euphrates to the Valley of Armageddon. Recent news articles have reported that the Euphrates River is indeed drying up. According to a study by the University of Arizona, the river's flow has decreased by more than 60% over the past century due to dams and irrigation projects in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. There's also been an unknown factor that has caused it to increase that no one can explain. This decrease in flow has significantly impacted the region, causing water shortages and affecting the livelihoods of those who depend on the river for agriculture and fishing. The drying up of the Euphrates River is a clear fulfillment of Bible prophecy and a sign that we must be ready for Jesus' return. As stated in Matthew 24, 44, therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. They dismiss all of the positive aspects of religion because they think that the stories are mirrored and you know we're inherently good and your ethics are based on your old moral compass and we all have one and that's not necessarily true we need, we need jesus <laughs> <laughs> i think for real what are your thoughts concerning the sealing of the cave in the euphrates river let us know in the comments section below thank you for watching remember to like and subscribe to see more videos